Hi, everyone. Today I'm chatting with my sister, Hani. Um, Hani actually was the one who um, got me and a lot of people in my family into the nurtured heart approach. So I'd love to hear you share with everybody a little bit about how that happened and well, not how that happened for us, but how that happened for you. How did you get into it and what made you, um, I don't know, get inspired enough to inspire all of us? <laughs> sure. Well, thanks for having me today, Musi. It's really great to talk to you like always. You really inspire me. Um, what got me into it? So one of my daughters, she was really struggling and I took her to therapy after therapy, play therapy, social skills groups. Um, I got her evaluated over and over and I just felt like the issues kept on getting worse and worse. And one therapist after, other, after the other were saying like, we don't know what to do. She has this problem. She has that problem. Um, this is not helping, take her to talk therapy. Maybe she has depression. Maybe she has this, maybe she has that. And I was so overwhelmed and had so much anxiety and I, I didn't know what to do. And then after I got her evaluated like three times and every time it was just like, these are the problems. Okay. Like, how does it help me? These are the problems. Like, and <laughs> now uh, it was just stressing me out, stressing her out. I remembered when she was in preschool she had gone to a school that did nurtured heart. And I just remember really loving it, but I don't know, kind of felt overwhelming for me to learn a new approach. I wanted to do it, but I just, I didn't, I, I don't know. I was just felt overwhelming for me, but now I, and I had saved a phone number from somebody that did it in my phone, somebody from that school. And I remembered about it. And I said, you know, I remember the nurtured heart approach was about looking at the positive. This doesn't feel very positive to keep saying this is the problem and this is the problem. So I called the person and I, I just started crying. I was so overwhelmed. I told her the story of all the therapists and all the problems. And I'm not saying therapy isn't bad, but I'm just, isn't good in, you know, when it's needed. But in my situation, it just wasn't helping. And I felt at a loss and the nurtured heart approach therapist said, of course, that makes so much sense. Of course you're stressed. Of course she's stressed. You guys are focusing on everything that she's doing wrong. And she's, told me, you know, the nurture heart approach is about focusing on what's going right. And I started listening to her uh, recordings and spoke to her quite a bit. And I decided that I was going to take my daughter out of all the therapies, all the social skills classes. I was terrified because who am I? What do I know? I'm not a professional, but it just, my gut just told me that it was right. I just knew it and I just felt it. And I was really scared, but I did. And I told myself I was going to give myself six months. And after six, less than six months, slowly, all the behaviors that were big, big, big issues started to slowly disappear and get less and less. And she started to feel more confident, more happy. I started to feel more relaxed. And I felt like, wow, something that's actually helping instead of making the problem grow. So there's so much I could say, but that's kind of in a nutshell how I started really getting into the nurtured heart approach. You reminded me of when I had my daughter in meeting with a child psychologist and we were going to start a whole long diagnosis process. And the, that pit in my stomach when I was like, I'm just canceling my next meeting with her. Like I just cold turkey. My daughter was like, mommy, why are we not going? I, I told her she was really young. I told her that we're going to see um, a doctor who's going to help her with all her energy because she has so much energy that sometimes, you know, she does things that with her energy that aren't good. So we're going to go <laughs> up and get a doctor who's going to help her to learn how to use her energy in good ways, which is funny because like in a way that's what nurtured heart is all about, but not really like meaning energy and using it in good ways. Um, yeah. And she was like, why don't we have to go to her? And I was like, you know what? Because I realized that I, you have so much energy I don't know why I thought that was a bad thing. I actually, that we have to like get rid of it. Oh, I think because I told her that we're going to, she's going to help us get rid of all her energy, something like that. I don't know, something <laughs> like that, something <laughs> crazy like that. And I was like, I'm so, I was like, I, I said to her, I was like, because I realized that your energy is so amazing. Your energy is your big heart. Your energy is, you know, yeah, you feel a lot of anger and you're very frustrated in a very big way, but you also feel so much love and creativity in a very big way. And you're able to do so much more because you have so much more energy and you just bring light and life. And I realized I never, ever, ever want your energy to go away. I never want to take it away from you. It's way too amazing. So we don't need to go there anymore. You don't need it. Like that, that fear of like stopping was like, am I crazy? 
I think it's not, it's, I think it's actually a good tidbit for people that like you gave yourself six months to like try, yeah. you know, like I'm not saying that we don't need help, but let me just try something else for six months. So how crazy that it was about not, it was, you saw behaviors go away when you actually weren't trying to get rid of them, I guess. Um, Is that what, <laughs> like, what does it mean that you said, like focusing on what was going right? Like, what did that practically look like for you guys? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to say about what you said before that that's so cool that you, said that to your daughter, that just makes me so happy. I mean, I see her now and she's just so amazing and such a beautiful person and full of light and positive energy. And it just makes me really happy that you did that for her. And um, I also really related to uh, what you said about um, not being sure. For me, it was very scary because the school psychologists were telling me like, she's not gonna be able to survive in middle school. She's not gonna, What's going to happen when she's frustrated? She gets so easily frustrated. And I told them, well, I'm going to build her up so that when she's frustrated, she has the capacity to be able to handle it. And they looked at me like I was crazy and said, okay, we could disagree to disagree. And that's part of the reason why I felt so insecure and so unsure because these are therapists, these are professionals, like who am I? But I just, but I just knew. So anyway, sorry, I just wanted to respond to what you said before. So back to your question. So I started to look for what was going right instead of what was going wrong. And instead of how to change it, how do I um, support it so that she doesn't feel like there's something wrong with her, but she feels good about herself. One of the big things that she used to do was scream a lot, like when she didn't get her way, when she was overwhelmed and, you know, I'm not referring to crying out of, you know, feeling honest emotion that of course I would never try to make go away. It's very healthy to feel your emotions. I'm talking about just like screaming because somebody breathes, like, <laughs> I don't know, just like screaming out like all the time and, and just like loudly. And it was just a lot and overwhelming and screaming at her brothers and if I said go in the shower and she don't want to like screaming for half an hour about that and so what the nurtured heart approach taught me was to look for any moment where she was calming down and to acknowledge that and so I remember the first time she was screaming and screaming and screaming and I was it was a very different experience because usually when she would scream I would shut down and I'd be like how do I stop this how do I stop this but because of the nurtured heart approach I felt relaxed knowing that I was actively looking for when she would take a breath or when she would calm down to give it attention. Instead of telling myself, don't give attention, don't give attention, and then explode. I was like, no, let's give it attention for the positive. So she was screaming and screaming and screaming. And then she like took a breath. And I said, wow, look at you. You're taking a breath. You're calming your body down. That tells me that you know how to calm down even though you're really frustrated. And she kind of looked at me like, yeah, like, what? what in the world are you doing? That's not how you're supposed to respond. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. And, and it was a little bit like a shock and she kind of didn't really know what to do with it. But every day I started acknowledging more and more until I would say, wow, you screamed for 20 minutes, 10 minutes less than you did last week. That's so much progress. Like, look at you calming down faster until eventually she just stopped yelling and it was amazing. So things like that, or. Can I ask you a question on that? Or do you want to say that? Example? Um, I think I know the answer, but like, did that in that process of saying like, wow, you only yelled for 20 minutes instead of 10. Did you actually, did you, did it change the way you felt about what was going on? Like you said, how focusing on, you felt more empowered knowing that you were focusing on and uh, you know, when, when she was calming down or the good stuff. So that gave you like a direction, which helped you stay calm. Um, but do you also feel like you felt differently about the behaviors? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question so much because yes, because beforehand it was like, we have to get rid of this behavior, which was impossible. I, I don't know how to get rid of the behavior other than sit there stressed, making her stress, making both of us yell more. <laughs> But knowing that I don't have to get rid of the behavior, I just have to look at a tiny bit of good and that's it. Help 
me stay calm. No, because that is something I could actually accomplish. That's something I could actually do. It's something that I, a goal that I can reach. And I, yes, and I didn't have to worry about getting rid of it completely. So totally, I, it definitely uh, helped me stay calmer and feel like I had more control over the situation because I didn't have to control something that I couldn't control. So I felt more in control. Mm -hmm. So like, it didn't, like, it doesn't, like, I mean, I relate to that. If I don't have to fix something, then it doesn't bother me. It only bothers me if I feel like I'm responsible for it. If I feel like I'm responsible for it, I have no way to change it. Then it's very, very hard whenever it shows up because it's a slap in my face or, or not a slap in my face, but like a direct, like evidence that like I'm failing or that I'm not able to do what I have to do. But if it's not a threat because you don't have to change it, then like, sure. Wow, you only yelled for 20 minutes instead of 30. That's progress. For sure. Yes, that that feeling like you have to change it. Like there's something wrong with me as a mother if I don't change it. I'm ruining this kid for life. She has all these problems. It's all on my shoulders. I have to fix this child. Like, what do I do? How is she going to survive in this world? All those thoughts would create so much anxiety that... And, and my, all my kids, especially her, picks up on my energy more than any words I could ever say. So when I'm sitting there stressed, even if I don't say anything, even if I control myself, even if I would smile and say, I love you, or give her a hug or not react with my words or with my actions, energetically, my anxiety about it completely stressed her out. And she always would have a reaction to my anxiety. So just the fact that I was calmer knowing that I don't have to control it and that it's not a problem because she's doing something right. And that's amazing. And to really feel good about that changed how I looked at her, how I looked at myself, my energy. And then that changed the tone of everything. I feel like I have to watch this back again. Cause I feel like I'm having epiphanies and like being inspired by so many different things you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> something that's striking me so much is like this, I guess, crystal clear clarity. It's not that I didn't know it before. It's just like the fact that you, when we have to control something, the, yeah. the, how fast it went from feeling like I need to control something that I can't control to the way you, to the way you were talking about yourself, you were saying you have to control this thing and you can't control. And then what did that go to right away? I'm a failure. I'm a bad mom. I can't do what I have to do. I messed up. It's like yeah. immediately my, my lack of success or my lack of capability defines you all of a sudden where all these bad things about yourself. And that's just fascinating to me because we don't have to tell our kids that or what if, like, it's kind of opening this like thought process for me of like, we don't have to tell our kids, like, you're a failure, you're messed up, you're bad, you're, you're wrong there, you know, you're, you're, you're not you're not set up for this life. You're not good. Um, in order for them to feel that way, like just the fact of them feeling the pressure of needing to be something they're not or changing a behavior that they don't feel like they can change or feeling like they can never have this behavior again, how that could so easily turn into them seeing them having a low self-worth and low self-esteem, like seeing themselves as bad when we're not saying they're bad. That's what's so frustrating sometimes with parenting is like, I'm not saying you're bad. I'm just saying Stop leaving your room a mess. That's all I'm saying. This has nothing to yeah. do with you. It doesn't matter that I'm saying this has nothing to do with you. Like you're saying about the energy, they hear never leave your room a mess and they didn't remember that they left the room a mess or it's hard for them to clean up. And they're like, well, then I'm bad. <laughs> like it just happened so quickly yeah. when you were just saying it. You were like going into how bad you were of a mother. Like it's anyway, but um, yeah. So coming back from that tangent there, um, <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> that was just like, but you said so many other things too, and about the energy and about her picking up on your energy and how her calm yeah. came to your calm. Well, just, to, just to add to what you were saying with about the kids, I totally agree. I think in addition to that, as a mother, you know, feeling like a failure and feeling like I can't get it right and feeling like I'm wrong and I'm bad and I'm not enough, like that energy alone affects my kids so much and even if I don't think they're a failure even if I think see positive in them if I'm when I was walking around having all these expectations that like I'm supposed to change it and I'm supposed to know how to control this behavior and I'm supposed to make her into something different 
it, it was like debilitating. Like I just felt like I was never going to get it right because I can't, I can't change something. I can't make you it were trying. You were trying really hard and it wasn't working. Right. So my anxiety grew and grew and grew. And just, I felt like a failure. And like, the more I couldn't control it, the more I felt like it was my fault. And the more I felt like it was my fault, the more anxiety I had. And the more anxiety I had, the more her behavior would bother me. And so, which made you react stronger probably to her behavior. <laughs> for sure. I needed to not see it because when I saw it, it brought up my anxiety and my failure. So you better behave because I don't want to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's so like we, we talk in some of the workshops I do and some of the, the um, exercises are about like, what are the things that trigger me the most? Like in parenting, what makes me react the biggest? And at this point in my parenting, for sure, hands down, I am the worst parent. And by the way, I think I'm a great parent, but I am the worst parent. You are. Thank you. I am. I'm going to own that. I'm not even going to say something bad about myself without first saying that actually I think I'm a great parent. Um, the, <laughs> I love that. Thank, thank you. you. It's true. Um, the, the, I am the worst parent when I am feeling pressure on myself to either know something I don't know, decide something I don't have a decision for, or, you know, judging myself that I handle something poorly or that something's my fault. Like it is yeah. actually not about my kids' behavior because my kids could be the exact same way and I'm totally know exactly what to do and we go through it and it could be it's not pleasant and could be there's kinds of, you know, it could be it's a bad behavior because it's destructive or hurtful to someone else and needs, and I am, but like the dealing with it is a totally different story when I'm feeling yeah. fine and clear and it, oh, it comes back to me like every time. Yeah. Wow. So just having that clarity, it sounds like for you of like your job is to notice progress. Your job is to see what's going right, freed up your, I don't know, talk about that. My, like, my stress. Yeah. I'll give you an example about that. Um, so she didn't have a lot of social skills. And so I took her to social, social skills class. And I would tell the therapists, everything that she struggled with and they would act it out. So for example, we went to a birthday party once and she was screaming at the top of her lungs because she wanted a gift that the other kid had and she didn't have, which no, is not socially appropriate. So I told them that. And first of all, that's just negativity because I'm looking at what she's doing wrong so that I can bring it to the therapist so that they could talk about what she should do right and how should she do it different, which I thought was amazing at that point. I was like, wow, that makes so much sense. Because it makes sense. Someone's doing something wrong. Tell them how to do it different. So they'll learn how to do it different. So I remember they had a pretend birthday party at the third in the social skills class. And they gave everyone one thing and her something else because they wanted to, they were hoping that she would scream and they would tell her how to do it different. It turns out she didn't care, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I was like, okay, that makes sense. But actually that didn't help at all. Because what does it tell, what did it tell her? You don't have social skills. You don't know how to handle yourself when you get a prize that you don't like. Change, which, what does that cause? I'm not enough. There's something wrong with me. I need to do it different. So how did I start doing it differently? I decided that I was going, well, the Nurture Heart Coach taught me to look out for anything that she did right. So I remember she had a friend over and her friend was talking. Now, Within about a minute, she, she, I don't really think she was listening. And within a minute, she would start talking about herself. But she had a hard time, like actually acknowledging that someone else was talking. But before, she, like two seconds in, I looked at her and I was like, wow, you are quietly listening to your friend and letting her talk. That tells me that you are being a really good friend right now because good friends listen to each other when our friends talk. And it felt so empowering because... I didn't have to change anything. I didn't have to make her understand anything. I didn't have to tell her what she was doing wrong. All I had to do was acknowledge what she was already getting right, even if it was by accident. <laughs> and I slowly started to see the moments that she did make eye contact or she did listen for a second or she did. And my love for her grew and grew and her love for herself grew and grew. And our relationship started improving and my anxiety started 
going away and her anxiety started going away and just makes me cry because I, I don't know, I have no words, just the difference between, you know, this is wrong. We have to change it. All the stress to like, oh my gosh, this is so right. I am so amazed at you. And I just love you so much. And my heart just went from like shut down and like, I need to get away from this child because all I feel is overwhelmed. Like I'm not enough to like, I want to be around her because my heart is just open with amazement at how well she's doing and how, even though these things are hard for her, there's so many moments where she is getting it right and she is trying and she's so cute. <laughs> she happens to be adorable. <laughs> and I really noticed and felt that when I started seeing all the good moments and, and even the times that she didn't have the perfect social skills, it was like, okay, it's cute. Like she's her own person. She's, you know, she's who she is and, and who says everyone has to be exactly the same and speak the same and you know, she's her silly self and it's adorable. So what's so cool about you is that some of us like me and some other people like our kids are still young and we're trying to do the nurtured heart approach in the hope that like we're building strong people and, and actually I believe it. I don't just hope it, but, um, it's so cool because like those people who are saying she wouldn't hit middle school, she's already past that. So speak about like what you saw in her growing up, like, yeah. Um, how did those, how do those prophecies go? Yeah. Well, actually she's in 10th grade now. When she was in middle school, um, I had a parents teachers conference and there were like six or seven teachers around the table. And one by one, they went around to tell me how she's doing. The first one told me that emotionally, she's like the top of the class. The second one told me that she is so responsible and always does her work on time and she's doing great. The third one told me how she, you know, is so respectful and she is just amazed. And one by one, you know, her social skills, her emotional skills, her academics. I was so overwhelmed in that moment. I, I started crying, of course, I'm always crying because I, I feel things so strongly and it makes me cry, which I own and totally okay with, as you know, mm -hmm. um, it's like breathing to me. So I started crying and I was like, do you guys know why she's doing so amazing? And I told them a story. I said that the, a psychologist told me that if I don't get her evaluated again, and if I don't continue therapy, if I don't continue telling her, you know, what's wrong, and she's not going to make it and she's going to struggle. And how is she going to do a puzzle on how I said, but I believed in her and I told her she could, and I complimented her and I told her that she's a good person and that she does have social skills and that she can do it. And the fact that all the things that she was so behind in, she's now ahead and are now her strengths. Like I had no words. I just, it was such an emotional day for me. They were all crying too, even the principal. It was just like such an amazing, empowering moment that like, even in those moments where nobody believed in me and I didn't believe in myself and what was I doing? And, you know, how could I just ignore what these people were telling me? but I believed in myself and I believed in my child and here she was doing so amazing. I mean, there's no better feeling. I honestly, if I had a hat, I would take it off. Like <laughs> I'm for you standing ovation. No, I really, that is so inspiring and so beautiful. And just the fact that you were her advocate and and like believed in her and chose to believe in her and allowed her to believe it was almost like you you didn't really need much training as much as you just needed that permission that like it's okay for your role to be believing in her because you did like it how naturally you're able to switch over just shows that you your heart knew that she was wonderful and that like all the negativity was shutting you down because it was so not like the truth yeah I think yes and I think the a bigger part was loving myself and believing in myself and telling myself that I was doing the right thing and that I could trust my heart and that I could trust my intuition. And even if the whole world tells me that I'm wrong, like I could trust myself. And it really helped me because I still questioned it. Even to this day, I still have critical voices that say, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing? I mean, you know, maybe she do this or maybe she do that. But 
at the end of the day, even though I think we all, more some people more than others, even though those voices are there, and even though I sometimes doubt myself, I don't have to believe in them. I don't have to follow them. I could still follow my heart and my truth, knowing that my heart knows, my gut knows, no matter what the world says, and to go after that. Hmm. <laughs> she's so lucky she's so lucky that you did that that you that you started seeing yourself differently and trusting yourself and thank you yeah I'm so beautiful it's so brave it's it's really brave I think that like one of the things that is really hard for people who are stuck for me it was really hard for me but I hear it from other people too and starting nurtured heart is that you know, listening about it, learning about it can feel really right and can feel really true. But then coming up against like other parents in playgrounds or family members or people who are like, aren't you going to do something about your kid or those professionals? Right. And it's like, and we're blind, like we see that our kids have serious behavioral issues. Like it's not a, yeah. like there is not you anyone who thinks that like, I'm this super mom, I am a super mom, but my children have behavioral issues that you would look at them. I mean, sometimes people are like telling me their story. They're like, yeah, but in my house, like I have a real problem. And they'll tell me what happened. Right. Almost want to laugh because I'm like, yeah, that happened this morning, three times in my living room. A hundred times worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're like, okay. So I just, either there's a problem with me. <laughs> like maybe I just, maybe I'm in denial. No, not in denial. I just have this belief that I believe in my kids and whoever they are and whatever they have is right for them. And it's supposed to be this way and they're going to ace it, whatever it is, whatever it looks like. Like it doesn't need, like you said, it doesn't need to be like, do they need to talk like everyone else? Do they need to walk like everyone else? Like, I don't know, but I'm not even going to bother trying to control or change that because I'm busy here with seeing the ginormous treasures they are because they are, that's what I believe. And so, and that's what I want to be busy with anyways. And it's my right, ha, I get to choose. So um, <laughs> anyway, the point is hearing you was so empowering. For so, thank you for so many, for so many of us, it's really hard that, that piece of like, that piece of like, yeah, like how am I even like, what about what the professionals are saying? What about what these people are saying? Like the parents that are judging me and like, choosing to like stick with that trust of like, no, I believe in this. I'm going to do this. I believe in myself. I believe in my daughter. Like it's so empowering to hear you say that. It's so inspiring to hear you say that. I feel like that's um, so helpful to hear and so important for people to hear. So thank you for saying it because yeah, I it, relate to that. Yeah. Just to relate even more. I don't know if I mentioned, but actually it was, I did mention, but just to mention again, that it was really, really hard. I, there were so many situations where people did judge me and they were like, aren't you gonna like give them a consequence? Aren't you like gonna reprimand them? Like, why are you letting them get away with this? Which it's not about letting them get away. It's just doing something that doesn't work and makes it worse and doing something that does work. Like you said, but it doesn't look like you're taking care of it even though you are. And it was really, really difficult and it was really, really hard. And I remember also sharing with teachers and I'd say, okay, I mean, I'm glad you found something that works for you, you know, like a very condescending way. And every time I did question myself and I totally um, just validate and understand the parents who struggle. And it's, I don't know why it's like this. It's something that's a sad reality, but I find that the more loving something is, the more hard, meaning the more effort it takes, the more um, amazing and beautiful and special and true it is, the less accepted it is, the less people know about it. And actually, as I'm saying it, I think I do know why, because it's so much easier to say, you're not listening, slap, Get it, go in your room, don't do it. Why? Because we don't have to deal with it. We, we have our own anxieties inside. We're overwhelmed. Leave me alone, right? It's just like, we want a quick fix. We want to just not deal with it and just, and we treat ourselves, we treat others the way we treat ourselves. And I think for so many people, and I used to be this way too, I wasn't taking the time to listen to what was going on with me. I wasn't listening to my feelings. I wasn't looking at what I was doing right. So how do I have the capacity to treat someone else that way? So if I'm 
treating my my child with patience and love and care and someone else let's say who doesn't have the patience and, and no blame or shame I get it you know but they don't have the patience and they just you know push them away it can bring up uncomfortable feelings like no that can't be right because then I have to do the work to do that like that takes time that takes effort that takes inner work not everybody has the patience or the time or the desire or the ability to do that, you know, for whatever reason. And I think, I think for me too, I mean, you know, I feel like we could all relate to that. Sometimes when I see something that I struggle with and someone else is doing so well, or it's just like, no, that's not for me or, you know, whatever, just block it out. Cause so in a way it could be a compliment that people say, no, you know, that can't be right because it means that it's really hard and it's really difficult and it's really takes time and effort and patience, not something that everybody has. And I didn't have it for a really long time. I kind of had no, I mean, I had a choice, but like, I was just like pushed into the corner when they told me that, you know, my daughter has like worse than depression. And I don't know what they were saying she has. I was just like, okay, no, like no matter what, like no matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it is, I'm going to put in the effort. But even though I knew about it in the back of my head, it was overwhelming. And I think, I think it's just could be overwhelming seeing something new, seeing something different, seeing something that takes work. And in the long run, it takes less work because once you do it and once you um, see the good in you and see the good in your kids, you don't have as many challenges and issues and your connection grows. Like I have a beautiful relationship with my kids now. But in the moment, it does take time and it is overwhelming and it is difficult and it does take time to carry it through and to not give up. And yeah, I, I don't, it's, yeah, you know, if I, I, think what you're saying, or, I think what you're saying about immediate gratification is so real and, and not in the kind of like just simple immediate gratification. Like it's not simple at all. It's really real. When, when something's in our faces, that's, what's real. That's what feels real. And being able to like think about or, or invest in and hang out for the future in that belief yeah. that like, this will be better or that it's, it's really hard to stay objective and, and, and not get sucked in. It's, it's really hard. So hard. And it's definitely the longer picture. I mean, it's like with money, like, you know, I could, when, when I want to, you know, to invest money in, I don't know, a course that's going to give me the ability to do a profession that I really care about. Like, am I really going to take the money and, and invest in that? Because right now I have bills to pay. You know, how could yeah. I, how could I invest in this course to get this license? But then if you get that course and you get that certification, not only will we be able to pay this bill, you'll be able to pay a lot of bills. And not only will you be able to pay a lot of bills, you'll have a life of enriched fulfillment of doing something that you dreamed about. But that's a huge risk to say, I'm not going to pay these bills right now. I'm going to get into credit card debt or whatever, because for the long run or investing in any kind of monetary investment. And with our kids, it's the same way. How am I going to ignore the yelling that's happening right now? Right now, right. my kid is yelling. It needs to, it's not okay. It's not okay. And we get so stuck in the not okay but one second, if I invest in building up this child and I, I'm not dealing with the yelling right now, I'm literally not. And yes, it's pressing. And yes, the professionals are telling me I have to. And yes, parents are like, are you going to do something? You know, you're just letting her get away with it. How am I letting her get away with it? It's irresponsible, right? But I'm keeping my eye on what I believe in, which is a person who has so much potential the world needs. The world needs this child to grow up strong because what they yeah. have to bring to the world, the world needs. And so that's like holding on to that takes so much courage, takes so much strength. I, I, yeah, yeah you did that. You did that. <laughs> You're and, a and what, that. what you said about going into debt, um, reminds me that it is kind of like that because when I started the nurture heart approach, their behaviors got worse because they tested me and they didn't, they were waiting for me to yell at them. They were waiting for me to throw them in their rooms. They were waiting for me to shut them down. And they didn't believe that it could be real, that I could be this loving, that I could be this kind, that I could really accept them for who they were, that I wasn't gonna, you know, treat them that way. And so they would act up even more to wait for me to react that way. And so it did in the moment feel like, how is this working? Cause it wasn't working, but yeah, and it was hard. I, I think- so How did you get through that? How did you see yeah, that? Was Honestly, I, I had to have somebody. <laughs> I'm so grateful for her. 
don't know if I could say her name on here. Sure, let's try her. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Buzzy, what's her name? Buzzy. Um, she goes by Buzzy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So thank you, Buzzy. You helped me so much. Um, I called her all the time. Ah, I don't know what to do. My kids are screaming. <laughs> like, are you sure I shouldn't scream back? <laughs> She'd be like, okay, you're doing great, you know? And I would call and say, the school told me I'm crazy. Am I crazy? Like always, I would just call her I, I, to get that validation. It was so, it would be too hard to do on my own. Like I needed that support, that voice that was with me, that was holding my hand, that was telling me like, it's normal, you're doing great, I'm so proud of you. And I, I mean, with myself, but also just to have that support. So I just, I'm glad that I have this platform to thank her because I couldn't do it without her. <laughs> thank you, Buzzy. Yeah. On behalf of me and my kids too, because without Hani, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's so cool. And, and also I want to say that for Buzzy to be able to be there for you on that level is so beautiful and so huge. And also it takes courage to be that parent who's calling that person all the time. Like it can feel like you're taking up a lot of space. I don't know if you experienced this, but this is how I would feel like to like yeah. call all the time and be like, how many times am I going to call and whatever, but to trust that she had your best interest in mind and that she really wanted to help you and that you deserve that help. I want to honor you funny for oh. having the courage to to lean into her being there for you to get yourself that help and, and ultimately to get your kids that help because that can be that can be really hard getting help asking for help asking for support you know whether it's on a whatsapp group or a message or calling someone or facebook group whatever it could feel like why am i the only one that's still having issues or you know are they going to judge me but i don't know you did it yeah. you kept calling that's huge Thank you. Appreciate the compliment. <laughs> Thanks for receiving it.